Uh, let's see if this works. <clears throat> Show my screen. And just double checking it. Oh, this works. This looks nice. This looks great. So wonderful good morning, wonderful good afternoon, and happy lunchtime for those listening to our webcast about virtual reality and our uh, our landscapes we we have with here. Here with A2K Technology, it's good to have you on around and hope you enjoy your lunch. So just a couple of tech checks and you still need to do here. So we are on air, we're showing the screen, sounds good. Uh, I hope that you actually all hear me in case um, just ask a question if you don't hear me. And uh, then this should be actually all right for that. <clears throat> for that. Good phone talking is the phone caller. This makes sense. So it's basically me, hopefully. And a couple of more popping in. This is good, but we need to get started. It's a little bit of a shorter, probably just 45 minutes we might take. Um, to run through a couple of uh, platforms here. Um, we have also in the end a couple of examples um, to show and um, hope that uh, we get a little bit more out of it. Um, we have designed this webcast um, around the topics many clients ask, many ask in the, in the big world um, about virtual reality and how we can access it. So I hope um, that we get all, uh, all um, questions answered. For that. Good, so first, um, who we are, what we do, and how do we want to structure it? First, a little bit of a recap who A2K is, in case uh, you don't know it. Uh, a bit of a recap, what we were talking about the last webcast, um, that virtual reality is actually a communication instrument, that it is actually uh, relatively old as such, because it's actually just about illusions. So we may have some artificial illusions we build up around us. Um, and then, yes, we want to talk a little bit about the different platforms, what they are actually all about and um, to make actually the right and the wise uh, business uh, decision. Good. So, and first of all, a little bit about uh, A2K. So in summary, what we are doing here basically is um, keeping the, uh, the knives sharp. So if, if I could probably explain it with an analogy. So if there's a butcher, a butcher wants to get and cut some steaks, and um, to cut some steaks, we need to have some knives and we try to keep the knives sharp for the butcher that we can all buy some nice good steaks. So which means, so we are about 150 staff large and across Asia Pacific, across Asia, Australia, New Zealand and China and so on. And uh, Platinum partner with Autodesk and some others as well and look after this support training, consulting in the business around the application. So we do application engineering. And um, with this, yeah, we can proud ourselves to be the largest team actually around, um, have probably also the most interesting jobs in proactive we try to conquer and we actually we do conquer um, all the challenges um, you throw in front of us and to ask us to do so. It's actually pretty good to work with you and um, hope that you actually get a lot out of it. So um, we have actually a bunch of software tools and applications we're looking into. So not only Autodesk, but um, we have, for instance, all some other cool tools like Bluebeam around and or Blackbox 22 if you're working with the council. And so hence, um, we have some uh, cool tools around to become more efficient because in the end, we actually want to be more efficient and to use the computer as a tool actually faster and actually better. Because uh, in nowadays time, um, there's nothing working without a computer anymore. Good. Um, to myself, who I am, well, my name is Florian, you probably we have spoken here and there maybe on some of the support cases or some of the engineering solutions um, about this looking after visualization and simulation and have the honor to ho host our virtual reality webcast um, today. Good. So let's have a quick look um, what we want to recap. So um, in the past, um, we were talking a little bit about virtual reality basically as a communication instrument and um, we see that it actually started a while back and what it actually means is um, we want to dive into an artificial world. Um, the world is good we live in, the world is wonderful and beautiful we live in, that it got designed a wonderful great world, um, but we also want to create our own world because we have a creating spirit basically we carry it. So hence um, we make use of the computer or any other instruments um, to um, 
to uh, create an artificial world um, uh, basically around us. So uh, quite cool is actually that we have actually the first hounded mounted uh, display, so HMD sometimes also um, we find this, uh, we had this actually back in the 60s and um, so what we now experience with Oculus and VR uh, HTC Vive uh, is was actually around for a long time, but why did it actually not uh, proceed? So why was it not? Why did it not take off? Why do we have so many runs that it actually takes off? Well, if you ask me, um, some of the headsets from the 90s actually look much better than what we actually have now. Good. So virtual reality um, here is nowadays computer generated. So in terms of uh, some of the words and some some of the buzzwords we actually have the virtual reality just actually means that we create this uh, this environment this artificial environment and uh, another one is what we actually have is we have another one is um, augmented reality which means that we actually blend the real world and the artificial world together um, this is often done with an addition with an additional camera and so when you buy a headset, just watch out that you actually have also another camera with it where you can actually blend and blur them and uh, lay them on top of each other. Um, fairly new and the buzzword is here um, mixed reality. And you could li literally say that we have a full interactive world with the interaction of uh, my artificial world. From uh, So the full interaction of my virtual world with the artificial world, with the real world actually uh, blended on top of each other. So what this means, so um, we have the artificial world from my computer. We have um, the virtual world we basically compose, we set up with my interaction um, so that me, I, with my hands, can actually grab some objects and um, I can, for instance, also grab some objects of the real world or of the artificial world and uh, I can superimpose some actions or I, the computer um, recognizes this, understands this, can process this and add some actions to it. So we, this is called actually a mixed re reality. Um, just make the X large with the R, then we understand here what actually XR as an abbreviation in the web, what this means. Okay, so we have here these three steps. So um, with virtual reality, um, we actually mean basically all these. So virtual reality is not the baby version of augmented reality. Virtual reality is actually the, uh, you could say basically, uh, the head or the, the leading um, buzzword here for that. But you could definitely say that mixed reality is above um, augmented reality. But with virtual reality, we actually mean everything. So. Good. So, um, how does this actually work? So, something new, a new slide. Um, so, uh, we have, obviously, we have a left eye and we have a right eye. And the computer actually renders um, just um, these two screens. So, in the end, you could actually say, when you plug in um, your head-mounted display set, um, you plug actually just in two more uh, computer screens and then it is actually being rendered on these two computer screens. Hence, we need to have a graphic card um, which allows basically to plug in two more screens, two monitors. So and commonly when we have just a CAD workstation, the graphic card is just capable of maybe one screen. Um, often um, the gaming graphic cards we have, they're capable of actually have two more screens. So basically run over all three screens and um, this kind of the hardware we actually need. So um, when we have this HMD, this head mounted display uh, set, we actually have also a couple of options. So because we actually want to pitch, we want to actually roll, and we actually here, well, also, you're basically here um, the set and the scene actually needs to update. So we have here, so to say, joystick sensors being built in. And all that they do is they actually just update our left and actually our right eye, similar like we had maybe a joystick in a fun game. And uh, it's uh, the screen updates then according to my joystick movement. And so this can actually also go up and down, obviously, to the left and always to the right or backwards and forwards. And the location where we are can be measured out by a sensor. So this is, for instance, here the HTC web, uh, Vive um, solution, having maybe some, ad some additional sensors here, while the later sets actually also help us that they actually have here cameras being built in, and they 
spy out the obstacles and build then basically a cage around us and tell us, hey, there's actually something you might walk against and then um, warn us within actually our headset. So pretty cool technology. Um, comes a lot from the uh, virtual reality being offered now with Microsoft Windows 10 as being built in, which is probably actually the key that we actually hear a lot about virtual reality now because um, over the last 40 and 50 years in the computer industry, um, the virtual reality was not being mainstream supported by the operating system. And when we, of course, have something, two more screens or a couple of sensors actually connected, um, the easiest is that the operating system actually understands this and uh, supports this actually mainstream. So this is probably the biggest breakthrough we finally actually have. So when it comes to the artificial world, there's a lot of a lot more out than actually just the vision. Um, probably 80% is about the vision um, in our artificial world, and then we actually have another 15% uh, probably about hearing, um, because we can use actually some nice headsets, and then we can actually listen to the sound. And so we have actually two senses which uh, build a synesthesia where we can actually, uh, where the brain actually adds on and builds the whole environment actually around us and actually adds all the other missing parts actually on. Um, there are some experiments actually also in the movies you may have probably heard uh, building artificial air worlds and with the addition actually of a smell. Um, but before I actually have a chemical bomb around us, because our uh, nose is being based on uh, chemical reactions, obviously, um, causing all kinds of um, uh, basically electrical power, which our brain then identifies, or having something like a taste, um, it's a little bit awkward probably. Um, there are some experiments where people um, have, so to say, some um, stimulation, stimulating uh, gloves they actually wear with. Um, uh, we actually we have basically some electroshocks you could basically say but um, to be honest um, it's probably not something where I want to look actually into it because I don't want to be electrified all the day. Um, so um, rather looking to the chemical and the taste and some of this um, it might maybe in, in the medical sense it might maybe help help us maybe to um, to look into this but um, in general, we actually stay here with the vision, actually with the hearing as a communication instrument. Good, so when we want to connect actually with our clients, let's see what platforms we actually have out there to support actually our visual and actually also our hearing. Well, there's a lot of industry actually happening, a lot of buzz around, including Facebook, including actually also Unity, including, for instance, also some other companies. And you see that they actually, work on all different fronts where people actually develop and companies develop all kinds of uh, good tools. We have seen in the last webcast a lot of applications for virtual reality and uh, so be it. And so it's actually pretty cool um, how it actually helps us. So we have actually a couple of cool um, special offers, I think this month still running um, about some of the backpack. Um, for those who went to the build, unfortunately, we didn't have it probably in time or maybe if you missed it, just um, ask in our office um, uh, about about the backpack if you want to check this out because it's first of all, it's a cool looking design and um, you can actually just wear it on the back and you don't have actually any cables. It's basically a laptop in the form of a backpack. Good, so um, last time we were talking a little bit about our A360 platform with a good cardboard box where we actually have a mobile phone we actually just fill in. Um, then, um, we were tired, then we demonstrated and had a look a little bit on Enscape. This is a little bit the plug and play, plug in uh, to Revit. And um, then we actually also look into Live where how, and mentioned that how we can actually use Live actually to enhance actually our scenes with um, 3ds Max Interactive. And for the next webcast, I promise you actually also a little bit of a coding with uh, Unity. Uh, 3D. For those who uh, visit us on the build, we had there a bit of a point cloud example. So point clouds and virtual reality is a really cool stuff. Um, we demonstrated maybe if you finish it in a, and finish your lunch that we can look into this code. So we have here um, live and escape. Um, let's leave this um, for the last webcast. Let's have a look a little bit into the different platforms we actually have around um, to um, 
to look into. So we have here Enscape, um, Revit Life, and uh, uh, we, we had a look last time. Um, A360, I've taken here out from all these tables. Um, just stay tuned about some of the other uh, platforms we actually show additionally here because these are new in the preparation for the next webcast. Um, you probably are wondering why Nevisworks is actually there. Yes, Nevisworks is actually also being used um, in the virtual reality and is being used uh, on site. Many actually use just Nevisworks for clash detection, but it's actually just 5% of what Nevisworks actually can do. Um, since 2009 or something like this, it actually has built into work in stereo and uh, also to work with stereo screens. Um, if you check out maybe the right mouse click in the button, maybe you find the button. And uh, if you have a standard, a standard CAD graphic card actually supports this. However, um, please understand that Nevisworks is more used for the project managers ideally or uh, for the management to see and to manage this project um, rather than actually um, for the client. So I could say probably that here this way outwards is actually for the end user and basically for the clients or for the stakeholders um, where we can actually uh, present. And this is ideally what we actually want to go with our virtual reality. Okay, good. So. Um, this means so when we look into um, these platforms, um, can we use them for marketing? Yes, and we see, for instance, obviously, you know, we don't use for marketing, um, where we can actually communicate and where we can actually sell um, our products. And um, Revit Live makes it very easy. We remember from last time that we don't need to have a heavy uh, gaming engine, and we can actually also um, connect this actually with our interactive. Unreal is actually another gaming engine which um, just all of a sudden pops up here in our presentation. Well, we had it in the last table already, but uh, it is actually, um, I would say, a little bit of a competition to Unity 3D. Or let me say it's not really a competition because it's just maybe a tenth of the user compared to Unity. And uh, But we want to actually also understand it because when we are uh, working in the uh, um, IEC industry, uh, the one or the other one is still uh, using it for that. Good. Um, we actually also want to um, compare these products against each other. That we make actually the right decision. That we plan actually the right uh, workflow for that. Good. So um, when it comes, for instance, um, for any training interaction, obviously we see that we are in the higher grade of uh, developed environments like interactive or Unity, where we are, because when we do some training, we definitely need to have some interaction. When we go to marketing, uh, we can actually work with some simple presentations, and uh, Enscape or Revit Live might be actually enough for us. Awesome. So um, when we also export any visuals, they actually all supply. This is actually pretty good. I have for Unity some really cool architectural examples which blow you out of the water for next time. And um, so let's see what else we have. Um, is it easy to learn? Is the question is because when you implement a whole application, you need to ask yourself, um, do I spend two or three months on it and I just, after that, I can basically present a line or do I actually have some really nice cool high gloss renderings um, uh, after just a, a little bit. And um, with Enscape, because they're actually plugins, they are actually easy to learn. That's fantastic. And um, as more interaction we want to add on, as more we need to be a little bit uh, open to learn a little bit about programming. And um, interactive makes it, us, makes it very easy for us because we um, have here basically a node-based programming. Um, with Unreal or with Unity, we actually do some um, heavy coding. Um, you will actually find later on in the metrics that um, coding with Unity is a little bit easier than actually with Unreal, uh, because Unreal um, is uh, supporting some, um, well, some deeper C++ platforms where Unity is happy with C Sharp. So, um, but more to this in a couple of tables. Good. Um, what do I actually need to develop? Does uh, a simple desktop actually uh, provide to the platform? Is it enough? Um, when we go, for instance, to live, yes, it is. That's pretty good. Um, also, when we go into interactive, because um, we do a real, we work here with a shaded rendering, and um, we can actually um, develop this. Um, do we need to have a 
gaming computer. Um, so basically you have a very heavy graphic card, be it from an, an NVIDIA, maybe a 1060 plus or better 1070 or ideally maybe a 1080. Um, GDX is a gaming computer. Yes, um, of course, um, we need to, uh, it, it would basically kill it. Um, it's recommended basically for all. Um, keep in mind, um, working with live, we actually uh, get this actually also going on a, on a smaller on a smaller machine. Um, because of CAD workstations being commonly uh, trimmed and designed to work with wireframes and others, um, Enscape, believe me, is very slow. Um, I I have I experienced this um, with my with my CAD workstation, so it needs it requires a gaming computer. Um, with with Live, because it actually runs on a desktop, it's not necessarily actually required. And when we talk about 3ds Max Interactive, uh, Unreal or Unity, um, yes, they actually work there as well because um, we partly develop on wireframe as well as on a shaded environment. And we don't necessarily need to have um, a full slow, a very um, high frame rate when we actually do the development. So there's a CAD workstation is actually good enough for us. Good. What are the features here? Because we actually want to read, uh, reach actually our end clients. And um, so when we go, for instance, to Enscape, we can actually export this as an EXIF file, which is actually pretty good. Um, with Revit Live, there was some other cool things where we can actually go also to a tablet which is good. So we have here a couple of easier features. So when we now look, for instance, into the workflow, just going, for instance, to Revit, many of us use, and we go to the View tab, we probably find there the Live button. It's actually just one mouse button push we need to do, and then we can actually author our scene or present our scene on an um, easy accessible device. So when we go the full length to uh, the professional gaming environments, um, for instance, let's say Interactive or maybe Unity, we can actually export it to any platform. Um, please consider that we actually have also here Sony PlayStation and actually Microsoft Xbox, actually, and others actually around. Um, for instance, HTML5 is another browser, which means that we can actually play the games in the web which means that you just open a browser and then you can actually uh, have here a full uh, gaming environment you wanna, you can play with. And they actually offer us all the export. Um, but again, be aware that it's a little bit on a professional side. So uh, this is stereoscopic. Remember, I mentioned Nevisworks can do this actually as well. If you have still a 3D TV around, I know they're not being built anymore, can happen. But um, if you still have one, um, you can actually use Nevis for this. Um, so there are the others, they obviously, they support this as well. We can actually bring this out. And um, when it comes to some common virtual reality, which means we have just a presentation, here. Um, we can basically walk through, we can run through um, Enscape Revit Live um, offers this. Um, when we go to mixed reality, I want to have a full interaction here. Um, unfortunately, Enscape and Revit Live doesn't offer this because they don't recognize our hands, they don't recognize any environments, and so uh, it, wouldn't, it wouldn't work for that. Unfortunately, with Revit Live, you could have an option when we use uh, the Leap uh, the Leap Motion Controller, LEP Motion Controller, I think it's called. Um, not double E, it's and the L E A P Motion Controller. Let's write it again here. L E A P. Just Google it in the web. Then we have some options. However, we would need to take these projects then actually. Uh, into interactive, um, but before you actually use it, um, you're probably better off to actually to um, work here and go to Unity, because um, that's everything already uh, prepared for you when you uh, develop some templates. So if you just want to have a um, run through, walk through, um, Enscape or Revit Live, there's um, that's the trick for you. Good, when it comes here to network collaboration, um, we can do this with Enscape, obviously via Revit, which is cool, um, because whatever we change in Revit, we actually can experience live in Enscape. However, we need to have somebody driving actually Revit. Um, when we go to social VR, that's another 
cool buzzword, which basically means that we all meet in a virtual world, um, then unfortunately we need to go and do programming. Um, watch these two, there's some cool stuff um, around, for instance, all about Forge with Autodesk actually as well, and for instance, Social VR interactive with, with Forge, there are some papers out from the Autodesk University, if you actually all meet there, but again, um, with our professional ones here, with this three here, um, we need to do some coding, we need to do some programming for that. So when it comes now um, to the end results, what we can achieve, be it for instance the visualization, uh, being simple walkthroughs, again, these are probably these tools you want to actually look into. And this, you could actually say it's just plug and play VR. Play VR. This means um, you just press a button, um, the plugin fires up, Revit Live fires up, and um, you just plug actually your uh, headset, which has just two monitors being built in, into your computer, and then you can immediately actually experience this. All the drivers that are already there included with the application, not by the operating system, but with the application, and they work, for instance, with Oculus and HTC Vive, actually pretty, pretty well. Oculus, that's the Facebook version, and then we have, for instance, the HTC Vive, um, which actually work here very well. If you want to go a little bit further using, for instance, Interactive, Unreal, or Unity, then we actually have also some other cool stuff we actually can do, full world scenarios, um, going maybe Smart City connected actually also with, with some other uh, controllers and actually sensors, where our digital twin means the copy what we have from a digital prototype in the computer can actually be manipulated and can actually be updated or uh, being used um, for the representation and presentation by these applications or uh, by these uh, logics we, we basically would program. Um, if somebody now asks and has to hear the questions, um, what do we actually do um, with the new uh, mixed reality platform? Um, they actually um, patch in or can patch into ATC, HTC Vive um, running here on Steam. Steam is basically a platform um, which provides the support of um, of um, virtual reality gear, which sits on top of the operating system. So it's called basically Steam and uh, would work um, actually as well. So if you have, for instance, seen some of the headsets, be it from HP, Lenovo or Dell, um, we had, for instance, some Lenovo ones on the build. And if, if you came around to our booth and have experienced this, then uh, they actually can uh, patch and work actually on the HTC Vive. So um, it's actually a cool platform. So with Steam, you're actually very, very safe. Good. So Smart City, basically, probably some of you have heard to have um, a 5G environment. Um, where all our uh, tools and toys, our um, street lights, that they all talk with each other, so they probably have a bit of a chat um, about our driving about our driving skills. Um, so when we have all these uh, our tools and all our gears and basically all our buildings and uh, these smart senders, they basically report back to a central computer. We can um, read out and we can optimize our environment, be it maybe looking for car parks, be it maybe being energy efficient and much, much more and basically have healthy environments. So this is what we actually have with Smart City and we can use our BIM models actually for this and of course we can do this actually with our two ones for that. Good, so um, if somebody says, okay, if somebody's maybe a semi-pro, look into the active, if you're a real pro, go to Unity. Good, so generative designs is basically where we have a computer generating the designs, um, currently with interactive, Really cool supported um, with Unity, some good programming environments. Unfortunately, the other ones, they fall a little bit short. Um, we have something with Forge, um, which is the API to our A360 platform being supported with Interactive and Unity. So yes, works pretty well. So next, what we actually have is here also some other third party, um, third party um, application speed, for instance, Google Tango or um, some artificial intelligence. Yes, unfortunately, we need to stay here with our big mainstream tools. Good, so um, with Unreal, I'm not quite sure about this one, this hence it is in yellow, 
uh, because uh, I haven't seen there any big examples, but theoretically using C++ you should be actually possible to do this. So when it comes to data exports means you have an environment, for instance, where you let the client decide what kind of color they are using, what kind of paint or how to arrange maybe a kitchen, and you actually want to feed this back. Yes, I want to show you next time some examples we have actually with Unity here. And then we can actually bring this actually back into Revit, for instance. Um, just in form of an Excel table, CSV table, which updates then actually also our family, which is actually pretty good for that. Good. So um, why is this important? Because when we look into our examples, um, what we can do is we need to design our workflow based on our stakeholders, on the people we actually want to reach out to. Last time we had a tiny case study here, the architecture company, that they want to use maybe virtual reality for the presentation, um, for any obstacles or for the usability or the spatial awareness. And here, a tiny example, for instance, if they, what they would pay, for instance, for the head mounted display, for a handful of laptops, maybe, or maybe let's say, probably one or two laptops to buy, um, look a little bit into training, have a charge out, right? And um, when we actually have less work just for the unit, um, we can actually save about eight grand um, for this. So um, not everybody is capable and is um, happy and good in reading plans. So we can use this tool to convey and to communicate better and which is actually pretty good. So, and how difficult is it to actually to get there when we want to do this business in terms, actually, remember, in terms of our training and for instance, actually, in terms of our training costs. So that's actually um, an important, important part. Um, if we have here the complexity we can actually um, achieve with our uh, virtual reality. And please note that we have actually here interactive. Um, interactive actually also supports um, C++ similar like Unity, like Unreal. Um, <clears throat> but Unreal actually comes up with a handful of more templates because um, compared to interactive. But we can actually get live actually into interactive. Um, on the X here, we have actually the time for the implementation, and you probably find um, when you are here into um, the complexity, what's possible, including for instance, some studies you want to maybe give out. Um, that Enscape unfortunately cannot do this here, um, so we don't have any sun studies. Um, they are not possible. We need to use Revit for this. Um, with live, I actually can have a bit of a play with this, so and it's a little bit more complex. Because I have just one mouse button, um, we can actually basically just um, start out of Revit, one mouse button. We actually have this here pretty in, in the beginning, so the time for the implementation, I don't need to buy anything, I don't need to install anything. It comes already with Revit out of the box, so hence I can actually do this with, uh, with Revit Live. If I want to do more, as mentioned, we can go to Interactive, and then we can do some scripting or some visual scripting with Lua. Um, if you then want to go more to the professional version, you probably find yourself more going actually to Unity because it's actually the compromise actually of all. However, please be aware that here and there you might need to do a little bit of a, uh, you need to consider a bit of a rework of your scene um, because as more as possible, as more you need to unfortunately put also in where the input coming out of Revit and others is um, a little bit or is not enough, actually, especially when it comes to the interaction or also when it comes to here interaction, interactive materials, maybe even for that. But it's not a big thing because once you have programmed something, um, we can maybe put the crown on, um, we can actually easily um, access this for that. Good, so um, in terms of my application, remember where we can go to, just as a quick catch up. Um, with Nevisworks, we need a gaming engine. With Live, we need to go to a desktop. It's just basically we can easily run around. Then um, with our interactive and with our professional versions, including Unity, we can actually also go to um, mobile phone. We can go to HTML5 lens and actually also to our um, gaming works, uh, to our um, gaming stations like uh, Sony PlayStation or actually to also to our Xbox for that. Good, so last time here, a bit of a recap um, that we have just also the simple renderings using just A360 with a stereo rendering on your mobile phone, but you probably um, tried it already and you found that you cannot really walk around, so the, build, the image or the doesn't really update now because it's just static just on one point.
cloud and then this wouldn't work and so remember that was here our Enscape. we can you can ask us about and then we had actually here our live when you wanted to go live that we have here um, access to this including some interactions including for instance all the different cameras we can choose and we can get this actually ready for our stakeholders and actually for um, our client for that good so that was live so let's have a little bit of a look into some of um, the other applications um, we actually have around here and um, I have somewhere here probably my 3ds max interactive here um, available and so let's see a little bit what you guys see my wonderful great background it's Venice and um, so I just go here for instance into my software as a virtual reality example I might just open this up here just um, to see the different platforms so we have here 3ds max interactive now up and running it comes to 3ds max out of the box already i think when you also have it in the ac collections so i think it's included and so on so we have already a full scene please watch out for the graphic there's some really cool graphic and some really nice cool textures actually possible watch out here on the top for the lights actually how the light actually becomes very diffuse um how it's being organized um we have here a lot of folders with these folders, we have our content, and in the end, we actually compile this whole content for our target platform. So, um, we have scripts already included, and so when we go from Sincere to Lua, we see here a little bit our scripts we can uh, look into, and uh, then um, have basically our programming code. When we go here on the left top to our level flow, we actually would see here um, also some notes based um, scripting and you're probably familiar maybe with um, Revit and Dynamo so it looks actually very similar doesn't it so um, it's not too difficult to actually to learn this which obviously means when we have maybe a trigger that something should actually happen so going maybe here a little bit further down um, for instance we find here maybe if the train is passing by then we have another certain delay causing another thing is and so we can actually wire this up so rather bothering you now here with the whole logic, I think we just we need to test actually our level and see um, how we can actually interact this. Here on the left hand side, we see our uh, our um, our toolbar, and with the toolbar, the top one, we have here test level or F8 and test the whole level. The data are now being compiled, and now you see that we actually have here now a bit of a sound actually also happening we have a train actually passing by we have a full interaction here we have a nice cool graphic and a cool nice presentation so and if i actually want to maybe go there i mean it's like in a game like i can actually just go here using w s and d currently it's as being programmed go a little bit around see a little bit here's a little bit annoyed so a bit looking out for the for the train the train is actually coming from the left hand side mate let's have a look a little bit to the left here it is and please watch the reflections and uh, watch the light how the light actually updates and um working here just on a common uh walk a little bit to the light not that i'm overrun by a train um they're being running here on a graphic workstation uh, it's just a comic cat workstation a zbook i'm actually running this Currently, and actually works actually pretty nice and flows actually here quickly enough. This is true. So obviously you can exp experience this, explore this. So was X um, Autodesk Stingray became 3D Project Stingray here. We became actually here 3ds Max Interactive for that. Good, because it's actually here a VR. Um, you probably saw in the background that my yeah my Oculus um, just popped up um, because I was just looking for this. I haven't connected it because we are now broadcasting here a webcast. So hence I uh, couldn't yeah, um, didn't find it. Let's have a quick look into Unity. Um, for instance, here a tiny example um, where we have going here to our Revit examples here. And um, when we go, for instance, here to our Revit Advanced Examples, so this is here an example like I could compile it just as any kind of uh, application for my client. We just have, for instance, here uh, a standard exe file. We can just start the exe file 
basically, and then funds and the tiny introduction actually uh, comes up, says hello, doing this with Unity. So Unity in A2K, if somebody is interested here. And um, I can here actually also uh, walk around, for instance, look around, for instance, here, um, move to the left, to the right, up and down. So moving up here, I have a little bit of nice, there's a bit of a nice vegetation actually, um, also around a bit of a background. And uh, when I, for instance, actually now want to go and say, for instance, I want to actually convey actually also some information around my object. We see here, for instance, the coin basically rotating, have something interactive here, just basically click on it and it tells, hey, there are actually 27 car parks actually around. If I would have now this connected with some sensors, it would actually count down the car parks. I could program it that actually counts down the car parks um, with every car actually entering the car park and uh, would give me basically here a light up, live update. So as a demo, um, I have also um, added a little bit of a fun here. So for instance, when I click my, for instance, my, my boat here in the back, so here's the boat now in the back where my river here is, um, that it actually moves basically with this. Um, another option, for instance, um, we have, for instance, included is um, is when, for instance, uh, say, I actually want to colorize my wall or I want to give the client opportunity to choose maybe the right paint. Um, I can, for instance, just um, change the paint here and that's just by wherever mouse button I actually my mouse button is I can give maybe this actually a different um, uh, maybe a different color if I want to for that I can actually also do this for instance here in my room so I move this a little bit around here and let's say for instance let's see if it's color five here for instance and let's say maybe the sixth color what we actually have here and um, I can actually uh, here update uh, my paint as, as often actually um, I actually like. So I have here an object to make it a little bit translucent. So just in case, just in case somebody actually wants to fly actually through, I say I actually want to have this basically as a um, as another as a other glass wall, for instance. And for instance, add this on in super now. Now I, I'm got, I need to get out of my building a little bit. So it's the Revit Advanced building we actually have here. For example, for instance, so it's, so, so I move a little bit further around and then oh, doing the webcast and doing this is a little bit challenging. So when I click, for instance, here, and then, for instance, have also some information about my, um, oh, but I don't want to go up, I want to go back. So here we are, click. So for instance, if I want to ask the client maybe to click on some uh, numbers to load it with basically with some materials. And so, so um, once I have actually these materials, um, I can actually just um, double click here on my um, CSV file and actually records all the materials I actually was just pressing. And uh, then uh, we can actually feed this information back. Remember we have even the um, ID from my Revit here that I can actually feed this back into Revit and actually here can make this whole thing actually um, interactive. So um, that's the scene here with Unity. We have, and um, but again, when we do, for instance, a little bit of uh, like say, for instance, changing uh, materials, we need to have a little bit of a, a coding and a bit of a programming um, experience, unfortunately. So I'm just bringing this up with Microsoft um, Visual Studio. And then we see, for instance, here on the bottom is actually the code which actually builds actually the file I can actually then bring back into, into my Revit. And here on the top, I actually have my, uh, my material. There's not too much to learn, but certainly it is a little bit actually uh, to learn. Okay, for that, brilliant. Um, this is what we do is here, virtual reality, literally we can plug it in. Um, I hope you have maybe a couple of uh, examples you maybe have downloaded already, maybe out of the web, or in case if you need some examples, um, ask us, let us know. We are more than happy to help you out. And so um, basically it, that's our webcast. We have 
another webcast is still coming up here. Obviously, let's make this a little bit big. So our next one with interactive technology, we want to see how we can achieve and how we can create actually the interactive technologies. Um, what kind of effort is involved there? What's the learning curve? Maybe we want to see some of the examples actually as well. It's on the 4th of July. Stay tuned. So it is the third out of our three series here. And um, well, today, hopefully, you got a little bit the idea um, what applications you want to look into, what applications you want to start downloading, and what applications um, you want to start playing with. And um, yeah, well, again, if you have any questions, just let us know. We're happy to help you out to keep you efficient and productive. Um, remember, there's a bit of end of year sale is basically out there. And uh, yeah, thank you very much. That's basically here, a little bit of a shorter webcast, but um, I hope that um, you got a lot out of it. Thank you very much for that, and have a wonderful, great day. Bye-bye.